Well, good afternoon, good evening, good afternoon. Here we go, it's going home time. We're gonna do a slightly, what? Slightly atypical angry podcast. Because I normally do things on the way to work, don't I? But I came into work late this morning because I've been working from home, doing uh, writing articles and things, and then uh, went out for lunch. Because I'm it's still a man. Black edition XE. Yeah, I'm in the Suzuki. I'm still a man of leisure. I'm still unqualified and disqualified. <laughs> generally, I'm generally not on the register. It's January the 11th now. It's uh, Thursday. So when you consider, let's have a think. I Monday, the Monday was a bank holiday. Tuesday was when I realised I wasn't qualified, I think. Wednesday the 3rd, they received the application because I sent it first class. And they say it takes 10 days. So it depends whether by 10 days they mean 10 days the 13th or 10 days meaning two weeks, 10 working days, you know, in which case it'll be the uh, 17th. In which case they've got another six days before uh, I get a decision. So, they have been in touch. I, I'm sort of emailing them every other day saying, you know, what the hell. <laughs> Excuse me, you know, fully qualified dentist here entitled to work and would be working if not for the fact I paid my ARF one minute too late. And, uh, and they're, you know, they, it varies from sort of the sort of, they, they'll always sort of, actually they're pretty quick at replying the registration to registration, a lot of the time they'll reply by return. Um, and, but they do add on, they tack on these annoying pro forma paragraphs, you know, which you know they haven't written, they've just copy pasted into the thing like, you know, but it takes 10 days and everything has to be considered in strict rotation. It's quite, I mean, it's instructive. I don't, I wouldn't want you to go through this. I'm, I'm quite happy to go through it, so you don't have to, okay? But, uh, because, because with these things, always the thing that you think is, you know, there are some aspects to it that which you, you don't really understand how important they are. And the aspect, like for example, this morning, I got a phone call, eight o'clock, right? From a patient of mine. Hello, uh, is that the emergency down the um, I need to come in today, I'm in severe pain, I need to come in today. And, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the, I think what the General Dental Council don't quite realise is that, that basically the person who's most inconvenienced by this is the, are the patients. The patients are the biggest losers in this scenario. Because there's a, there's there's someone who needs a dentist who has got a dentist, you know, uh, who's in severe pain and yet really is we're, we're struggling to come up with ideas as to how to get her out of pain. Because I'm the GDC says I'm t I'm not allowed to touch her. I'm not allowed to touch her. So what do we do? You know, do we recommend that she goes to another private dentist? Do we uh, recommend that she goes to A and E, sees her GP, gets some antibiotics or whatever? It turns out that. Uh, one of the dentists who used to work here uh, well he still does work here actually uh, he's going to be working he w he's going to be working at the practice uh, until the end of January but um, he's uh, and then he's retiring so and he just happened to be around and so I've asked him you know the reception asked him if he could come in and see this woman so he's coming and giving her some antibiotics but I don't know You know, I mean, you, you sort of, when you have like an enforced break like this, you've got patients who've got crowns that can't be fitted and you've got patients who's, you know, maybe halfway through root treatments and things like that. And I've just told all the patients I've got the flu because there's no point, you know, can you, you can't really go to the patient and say, look, due to a technicality, my GDC registration has lapsed and the GDC insists on treating me as a new dentist and making me wait two weeks to decide whether to put me back on the register. You know, someone who's there but for the technicality would, would have been entitled to have practiced. 
the sensible thing, of course, would have been to have said to every dentist who just forgot to pay by the deadline, send us a check. As soon as the money's cleared, we'll put you back on the register. But by the way, we're going to put you through the, the new dentist registration process, which means you've got to send us all your CPD, which is what they did. They, they wrote to me, I think the day before yesterday and said, send us all your CPD. So I've sent in all the CPD and they've got it all and we're going to see what they say about that now because I mean, I've got, I mean I, I went through a CQC inspection in March I think, March or April I forget and we, we passed with flying colours but there's no point in me ringing up the GDC and saying look guys if you check this was all, this was all checked by the CQC uh, eight months ago. They're, they wouldn't they're not going to appreciate that they're just going to say well yeah now we're now we're checking it you know there's no reasoning with these people <laughs> and I know because I've dealt with them I've dealt with them on behalf of other dentists I know I am now taking the advice that I give to everyone else which is stay calm right don't get stressed two weeks off is not is not a big deal one way or the other in the, in the overall scheme of things dentists do have two weeks off from time to time so think of it as an extra holiday you know and just a way of, you know and just and just having to scrunch all the income up towards the end of the month instead of the beginning if they start picking nitpicking holes in the CPD then I'll know that they are gonna get seriously antsy about the whole bloody thing I mean and seriously and there's no there are no I mean I have got the CPD so there should be no trouble the only slight flaw in the CPD and it is only a very slight flaw is that they say that the core CPD for uh, CPR and should be 10 hours in every five year cycle and I've done eight hours instead of ten so I've done more than 75 hours verifiable but of those 80 something hours or 90 hours I've done I have only done 8 instead of 10 on CPR and that's because we did it as a day course and because it was done over one day we got 8 hours for it and which left me 2 hours short but I've still I've covered the entire syllabus you know and I've spent a whole day doing it and not a long time ago either, I think it was in the last six months or so. So I've covered the syllabus, but I haven't covered the, the hours requirement. So probably with hindsight, what I should, should have done was I should have just done another two hours CPD online and then that would have been, that would have made it up to 10 hours. But the relevant period, as far as they're concerned, is the five years preceding my application, which was the 3rd of January, so, so in sending off the CPD, if I had done another two hours and said, right, there you go, I'm fully, fully compliant as far as I know now, 10 hours CPR, um, they would have said, yeah, but these two hours were done after the 3rd of January, so they don't count. I mean, that's the, that's the attitude, you know? So if they do raise an objection, then, and believe me, they'd have to be pretty bloody, bloody minded to raise an objection. <coughs> under the circumstances then one possible solution would be for me to do another two hours CPR and and then post date my application and just say like okay anyway, I wish to withdraw that application and I wish to reapply in which case I'll end up reapplying from the 13th of January and then and then it'll be up to them to see exactly how bloody minded they are because you know they could they could then say oh yeah new application 10 days 10 more days that we'll have to take us another 10 days to look at it now new application back of the queue back get to the back of the queue you know they could do that or what's the worst case scenario or they could say or they could say well mr watson in your application you ticked a box to say that your cpd was up to date 
and yet we find that although you have done the verifiable hours and you have done the non-verifiable hours and exceeded them by quite a margin you lied to us about your CPR you said that you'd you know you implied that you'd done uh, the core 10 hours and in fact you'd only done eight and that was a false statement and we take dishonesty very seriously <laughs> so you know next stop disciplinary proceedings get you struck off properly you just don't know do you know what I mean you just don't know what these people are going to do they're, they're capable of anything anything they are and while while you know I go through days when I am quite capable of thinking that they can, they and you know, can, and the horse that they rode in on can f off. <laughs> they are actually, I do appreciate that they are, they're just people. Do you know what I mean? They just, they don't know any better. You can't get cross with these people. They do not know any better. They are minions. The mi I'm dealing with the minions. I'm not dealing with the boss. The, the Evelyn Gilvary and the, uh, you know the bill what's his name bill moyes and all that i'm not i'm not dealing with these guys i'm not dealing with the chief dental officer the people who set the you know the tone the people who set the overall i can understand why uh you know people there have been high profile resignations from the gdc and high level investigations and why they've been you know why they've been investigated for the failure to reach their targets. They've gone, they, they've gone through, and they're still in the middle of the throes of an appalling mismanagement, you know, middle, middle mismanagement, that's uh, caused by the fact that they, they don't have anybody there who really knows what they're doing. And by, by which I mean, doesn't know, I don't mean doesn't know how to fill in a form. I mean, because they all know how to, work a word process to send an email and fill in a form I mean there's nobody there who's really been a dentist who uh, you know is capable of keeping their feet on the ground keeping them all sane giving them like a quick slap with a wet herring and saying look you guys just stay stay in touch with reality here you know this guy was like two minutes late paying his ARF all right let's make a point let's let's give him Let's sort of give him a punishment beating, give him a, force him to have two weeks off and list all his CPD and everything, but let's, let's let him back on the register. I mean, you know, it's not like I'm a new, I mean, I've been, this would have been my 37th year in practice. I think, I, I think you're entitled to say you're a senior member of the profession when you're just going into your 37th year and still got a few left in you, you know? So, and this is how they treat their senior practitioners. You've got to worry about how they treat their most junior practitioners. But you've got to do, like I say, I have to take my own advice, right? My own advice is to stay calm, work the problem, work the problem. What do they want? They want an application form. Okay, give them an application form. What do they want? Okay, they want all your CPD. Give them all the CPD. Don't uh, don't give them anything else. Don't don't put a load of notes on it saying, oh by the way this, oh by the way that, and I read this book and I found it was rather good, and uh, perhaps you ought to give me credit for this and that and all the other, you know. Once you've done the hours, that's fine. Don't worry too much about the unverifiable. That's the one thing about unverifiable CPD is it's unverifiable. If they write back and start to question you about it, you can say, look, why are you asking me to verify X, Y, and Z? This is the unverifiable bit. Just work the problem, okay? Stay calm. If they want a check, send them a check. If they want your comments or something, send them your comments. All the time, keep your voice down. Stay very civil. Uh, don't volunteer anything that they don't ask for. Keep your answers brief and to the point and make sure that they cover the the issues that they raise, you know. Um, that's good advice, not just with the GDC but with the commissioning authorities and whatever, you know. So let's see, you know, we're at the moment, they're still within the 10 days. 
so that's fine you know it would have been nice if they'd said well we do say 10 days but seeing as it's a technicality and the only problem with your your registration is that you paid a minute too late we're going to get you back on again in three and I honestly believe that they should do that I think they should have a fast track uh, or allow you to pay to go into a fast track if that if you want to be fast tracked uh, especially if everything all your ducks are in order you know if if you're if if by if uh, other than by virtue of you paying a minute late you would you would already be working I think that you know and you're so therefore your application is is pretty likely to be in order I think you should be fast-tracked and it would have been nice if they'd come back and said you know a simple application only took us three days but why you know why but they're like you know oh, well we say 10 and if we don't take 10 then people are gonna say well why you know did he's in three why don't you do mine in three not that that would ever happen I mean that's just painfully ridiculous but anyway what I'm trying to say is that they're still within the you know they say 10 and they're within 10 so and 10 will take us through to the 17th at the very latest and it's the it's the 11th now so I mean technically it could take me through to the end of next week could take me through to next Wednesday anyway and all the time poor old Penny's cancelling patients every day she she says to me any news then no okay cancel another day's worth of patients any news no cancel another day's worth of patients there are, all these patients are getting their appointments cancelled and this the GDC is supposed to be protecting these patients it's supposed to be that's the whole point you know if you talk to the GDC and ask them why they're not a bit more dentist friendly they will tell you out and out they're not supposed to be dentist friendly that's not the that's not their remit at all at all their remit is protection of the patients their first uh, job is to look after the patients and yet paradoxically when in a situation like this they end up being you know by standing on the letter of the law and insisting on taking 10 days they um, the patients are the people who end up being most in inconvenienced I'm having a lovely time I'm going out for lunch with my mates. I've caught up on all my paperwork. My desk is empty. I've, uh, you know, I've, uh, I'm getting so I'm so laid back. I'm actually thinking of reading a book. Anyway, so that's the, that's where we are at the moment. You know, we're still we're just still working the problem, and uh, I am. I refuse to worry about it. I know, you know, worst case scenario is that they just come up with so many objections to my registration that I'm going to end up taking early retirement. <clears throat> but uh, I don't, I, you know, I really think we're a long way from that at the moment. So we'll have to wait and see. I mean, if they're going to treat me as a new dentist and the new dentist has got like a very, very, very slight deficiency in their CPD as capable of almost immediate rectification then I would expect them to just point that out and not uh, you know it's not their job to disenfranchise dentists is it really it's their job to register us if we're in, if you know if we're good enough and qualified if we're qualified and pass the various tests then the other the flip side of that coin the registration coin is that they they don't have a statutory reason not to register you know if you can prove that you'll pass the statutory various statutory test then then it's their job just to stick you on the register you know not to uh, not to be funny about it they, they must do it so let's hope it gets rubber stamped so it's Thursday today I mean it'd be lovely if I could hear something by tomorrow if I don't hear something by tomorrow then I'll gonna drop a little email just asking if I should cancel the patients for next week uh, keep and make sure that my application stays at the forefront of the registration team's consciousness. Very friendly note, just a friendly note. See what they say. They'll probably write back and say, Mr. Watson, we have to 
Deal with the application strictly in order they received. We will send you an email asking you to pay in due course. Kindly do not waste our electrons. Anyway, I'm nearly home now. That's the paper shop. So, you don't normally see this bit of the journey, do you? Anyway, I'll let you know uh, if anything happens. Uh, you'll be the second person I'll tell. First of all, I'm going to tell the receptionist to stop cancelling the patients, and then I'll tell you. Alright? So, wish me luck. Bye for now.